Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Our guest today is Jeffrey Calhoun. Now, if you listen to the show frequently, you will recognize Jeff as a repeat guest. He's even co-hosted the show. He is a screenwriter, an advocate for the craft, and he's now the author of The Guide for Every Screenwriter. Now, I am right in the middle of another screenwriting book that I'll allow to remain nameless. I took a break from it to pick up Jeff's book and plowed right through it. It's not a formula for screenwriting, but it allows you to make sure that you hit all the right beats so that you connect with your audience with your own story. So if you are a storyteller or a screenwriter of any sort, you should get it. It's the guide for every screenwriter. He's our guest today. He's our friend. He's Jeffrey Calhoun. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. Is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this is East. Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morales. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mitchell Lepp. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. This is Jeffrey D. Calhoun, author of The Guide for Every Screenwriter, and we are on The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Yeah, we've got Jeff on. It's Pete and Pete at it again. And I <laughs> wanted to have Jeff come on because he re- he did just author this book called The Guide for Every Screenwriter. And I read it. I see, he's, Jeff said, hey, would you read my book and tell me what you think? I sat down and did not move an inch. And I was done in a fairly short amount of time. But if a book locks me in like that, I want to make sure everybody, especially people who are screenwriters, but writers in general, people that have a passion for writing and story, ha- I want to make sure you guys know about this book because I, I know it's fantastic. I I bought it. I bought it for Pete Koch because I, I'm like, hey, read this book. I won. I want to do my friend Jeff a favor because every book sale on Amazon helps. Make sure you guys rate and review the books. And two, Pete Koch is my friend. I wanted to make sure he had a chance to have this great resource. So um, I'll let Pete say something next, but... Jeff, thank you, one, for writing this book, and two, for coming on the show, man. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Love being in with you guys. My, my sentiments exactly, Jeff. My pleasure to meet you and to, uh, as someone that's read your book, The Guide for Every Screenwriter. And I, and I, was, I was completely thinking in terms of a book I'm going to write and it won't be, it's not a screenplay, but I'm thinking of writing a, a, a book about something, you know, biographical and the mm-hmm. things uh, I've done in my life and accomplished and in, in, in physical fitness and some of my passions. And your book isn't just for people. I suppose that was your, your aim at the beginning for to help aspiring screenplay writers. But your book is, I just for the sort of folks know, is a righteous guide <laughs> to writing anything and and I appreciate the simplicity and the efficacy with which you make something that to us uh, non-professional writers like myself it seems so daunting so overwhelming at times to begin to write your own book but I swear to you I have in reading your what is it it's a it's a slim book 111 pages, pages. 113 page. I yeah. it's, it's a confidence builder. Instead of I have picked up books on screenplay writing before and just yeah. been overwhelmed in the first 10 pages. Your book, I had the complete opposite reaction. I built, I gained confidence as I went through. How did you do that? <laughs> oh man, that's that's so kind of you to say. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. Um, with this book, I wanted to create something that even someone who has never written before can be gently taken through the process. And then by the end of it, be completely able and confident to write their own book. And it was, it was structured that way on purpose. It brings you in gently. And then as you continue to read it, uh, it kind of slowly reveals and breaks down the mysteries of screenwriting. It's also interesting. They say that it's, it's motivated you for to write your um, autobiography because I've had comic book writers come up to me and tell me that they're using this for their comics now which to me is, you know, unexpected, but, but pretty amazing. Well, you do do a good job of breaking down story into manageable pieces. And then even if you've got a complete idea, there's all these elements where you're like, here's where you can push further and, and dig deeper. And, you know, you've, 
so the structure is laid out, the formula is there, but you add in the ability to add spice. So even if your screenplay is developed, it's going to improve by going through the book. I loved that about it. Yeah, um, I, I wanted it to hit all levels. So even veterans can come in and look at it and they can either have a quick refresher or we're going to hit moments where they go, like, oh, maybe I haven't developed my subplot as thoroughly as I needed to. But then we even hit things like protecting your screenplay in the proper way or branding yourself as a writer, which is something something that a lot of writers have never even considered. So, yeah, we really tried to hit dot every I and cross every T with this thing. When you sent the book out for your own personal peer review, what, what did you hear back? Like what, what kind of things? I mean, I know from reading it, you went back and made changes Man. even after I read it. What were the nuggets yeah. that came out? I got to tell you, you know, when you write a book, you, you'll feel so vulnerable, you know, because you're just kind of putting your thesis on life in written form and saying, here, criticize this. And the feedback I got was, you know, overwhelmingly positive. And so then I started saying, OK, is, is, you know, maybe they're just being friendly. I need I need people that are going to tear this thing down because they say, you know, always send it to your worst enemy. Right. So I have a. Um, have a writer that I, I, I really rely on who can break down all the BS and really give me give me a good what for. They loved it. They were blown away. And that's when I was like, OK, there's there's something here now. Jeff, what was it that prompted you to want to take, you know, the ideas that were in your mind and mm -hmm. and put them in black ink onto white paper it's such a daunting task yeah um, yeah how did how did that begin for you well it's 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 that's a really great question thank you uh well it started i was invited to teach in africa i was actually asked to travel to africa and teach um screenwriting for film students in ghana so i was like oh boy i better start creating some seminars so i created seminars and I started testing them out at film festivals and then finally um, teaching them at, at our own film festival script summit, part of the AOF mega fest in Vegas, which is big. Um, and then uh, Ghana ended up um, dropping out. They had, they had issues and they, and they uh, pulled out. So that didn't happen. So I had all of this seminar material. I had a little bit of downtime. And I remember looking at my wife and saying, you know, if I can write this book, I think it's now or never before I pick up another screenwriting gig. So I just sat down and started hammering away. And uh, this thing kind of birthed itself. And, and, and just let me pick up on that thread because we we spoken a little bit before we started the show, and that you speak to aspiring screenplay writers as uh, an educator, uh, and, and I can I can just tell by the the language in your book as a motivator, it's very positive, and, and the way Thank that you. you speak in the book, it's 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 a it's a very important thing because I'm I'm a big fan of positive psychology. Yeah, as a former you know, professional athlete. I, I played in the National Football League. I was, uh, you know, people people just focus on that time that I spent in the National Football League. But if, if but the, you know, the real students of the game and, and athletics and coach, they understand I went through a whole heck of a lot of coaching before I got to that point. Boy, what a mixed bag that was, including a lot of terrible coaches that I had to overcome. I mean, part <laughs> of getting to the NFL, I tell people, is actually overcoming uh, and, and then, then if you, you get lucky enough, you get a few, a, a good coach here and there that not only can show you things technically, and, and that's a big part of what you offer in your book is, is, is from a technical standpoint, let's make yeah. no mistake. There's lots to offer technically in the book, but also the, the positive psychology that's imbued in your book. That was a, such an important thing for me. I tell people this, and I think it translates a, a, to what you do. And I could, I would love to attend one of your seminars after reading your book is, is I, here's what I wanted from my coach. And here's what I think, but you're going to, you're going to opine. Here's what I think uh, 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 aspiring screen writers and novelists would want from your seminar and your, you, you're never going to write a word for them, but here's what you can do. And I think you do do, and that's position them for success. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's actually absolutely what we were going for with the book. You know, I run WeFixYourScript.com, and that's a service where we uh, help writers through kind of a mentorship capacity. And when I founded that company, it was specifically to come across um, through a supportive environment. Because with screenwriting and, and some of the industry in general, it can get a bit caustic. 
And uh, that can really wear a writer down and, and a lot of uh, feedback and coverage you can get can can get can be pretty harsh and critical. I mean, I remember when I first started out receiving notes from paid professionals saying, just give up. You shouldn't do this. Jesus. You're you're in the wrong field. You're never going to make it. And, and, and all the way down to personal attacks that I paid hard cash for. And, and I remember when I finally got to this kind of stage in my career, I was like, okay, I need to give back and show the way it should be done by mentoring and fostering and creating that urge to succeed. Um, and so that's what we've done with our clients. And I wanted to, to bring that to the book. Um, as far as screenwriting goes, I believe, you know, because personally myself is I, I am dyslexic. You know, I, I had struggled learning how to write from early childhood and had to uh, had to beat that on my own and kind of adapt. And so I can understand struggles people have with writing. And, and I've developed this belief that I believe everyone is a writer at heart. I believe everyone has that book inside of them that they want to write in one capacity or another, just like you do. And I wanted to create a text that would allow them to do that through screenwriting. And then I think we've achieved it. <laughs> I'll say, I mean, again, I'm going to go back to the whole thing about everybody's got a book in them. And I totally agree with this. The next thing, the next hard thing is, is laying it out. Everybody can tell you how their book or their, their movie opens, but then what happens in minute seven? And, and you literally pick out minutes. Of like, no, here's, yeah, here's what needs to hard. happen in these times. And yes, you can break the formula apart, but you have to know that there's a formula there. And just, just the idea of breaking your story into these smaller pieces and then individually mm -hmm. making each point better or adding some background before you write another part to understand more about the character or the situation or whatever it is, all that stuff is in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can absolutely break a formula, and I wanted to create a, um, you know, our our, our nine-point main plot outline that's in the book. I wanted to create an outline that would allow you to do that without you having to break your mind. And so there's a lot of freedom that comes with that main outline that we have. Yeah, the other thing, too, that I like that you get into is, is the brevity with the writing, and, and it's not, you know, <laughs> we... We just had Craig Johnson, who wrote all of the books for Longmire. And he, when he does writing seminars, oh, okay. he's like, I don't want to hear about, you know, the red hot barrel, you know, shown in the looming glow of the mountains. He's like, the mountains are always looming. <laughs> the barrel is always red hot. You have to give me something different. And you're even yeah. less than that. You're like, leave that to the director on all of those folks. Just give me the words that are being said and, and get out from there. H how, do you, how do you tell a writer... And I think it's great advice, but how do you tell a writer to write even yeah. less than they think and let other people in screenplay terms do their job? Well, screenwriting is a visual medium that's in the written form. And that's hard enough on its own to kind of get your head wrapped around. Um, so a lot of people will, will try and take a novelist approach to it. Well, they'll write, you know, these huge blocks of descriptive action, you know, 8, 10, 12, 12 lines of descriptive action. And I just tell them, cut that down to four lines. No more than that. Um, a lot of people do five. I say four because it even makes it uh, that more quicker. I mean, you have to be Spartan with your writing and efficient, but you still have to creatively paint that picture with as few of words as possible. And, and that's why screenwriting is considered the most difficult of the literary arts, because you don't have time to throw in a bunch of fluff. You have to paint that picture precisely yet and still make it enticing to the reader and beautiful to the eye. I, and I appreciate that. I, here's something, a part of your book, and it's early on that I've already got, you know, dog eared and, and highlighted and for a couple of reasons. And, and that is where you say, uh, and you're dispelling some myths. Uh, and one of the things you say, you, you know, you know, right, yeah, right, right. Just about, what you know about and uh but and then but you encourage people to to stretch your muscles and and, uh, I, and we yeah. say that i'm an actor right so we say that as an actor and you say look at here's an example i like to and you say 
Think of these movies, The Thomas Crown Affair. It's a thriller. Mm -hmm. These are fantastic films. Mrs. Doubtfire, mm -hmm. one of the great comedies. Limitless, this incredible sci-fi. I found that to be a really fascinating film. Yep. And they're all written by the same person. Mm -hmm. And it's a woman. Yep. Leslie Dixon. And uh, at the risk of sounding like this is all about me, I, I met <laughs> Leslie Dixon. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> And because I worked on a film called Lover Boy, Lover Boy was, and I it was uh, it came out in 1989. Patrick Dempsey uh, was the star of this movie, and it's a comedy, so we know she can. She and she a few years later because Lover Boy came out in 1989. It was also directed by a woman, Joan Micklin Silver. Okay, um, so let's. This is we talk about a girl power movie way ahead of its time. Yeah. And Lover Boy is a movie I'm very proud of and I and I worked with some terrific actors on that film. But that was 1989 and I remember meeting her and her husband's a writer. Okay. I forgot his name. Tom Tom uh I I'll think of it in a second. And they were um good goodness. She is one of the most and I'm, this is such a, an awesome example. First of all, I think women should be inspired by that. Um it, not, not that uh, it, it matters. Talent is talent. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, but what a brilliant, and I'm just looking at, at Leslie Dixon since she wrote lover boy, she wrote so many hits, Mrs. Dowd five, the Thomas crown affair, as I said, yeah. pay it forward. Freaky Friday. Yep. Yeah. She did that one. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's totally like a different that. genre. Right, yeah. Uh, Limitless, Gone Girl, over the new the remake of Overboard, mm -hmm. and wow, yeah, she's just a powerhouse. I mean, someone to really look at and go like, wow, I need to be able to do that. And uh, one of the and, and you're speaking about the chapter, the the myth of write what you know. Uh, part of that I wanted to get into that is because people think, oh, I I can only you know write um, slasher films, so that's what I'm going to write and. Being a, a script doctor, a script consultant, coming in and, and having to fix scripts last minute before shooting or saving scripts going into pre, I, I've had to be able to break out of the genres that I'm comfortable in. And in so doing that made me uh, so much stronger of a writer. So when I see writers say, oh, you know, I'm a comedy or I write drama, uh, it's, it's imperative that they push themselves into a different genre. Pick a crazy genre you would never write and then write that genre. And I have tools in the book for you to learn how to write that genre. And it will push you and your skill set far beyond you thought you could be it. So what are some of those, those tools then? I mean, like, let's say I, I want to write a rom-com. And I just don't know, have any idea how to do oh, that. Yeah. You know, and, and, but I've got, I've got an idea. What are those tools? Yeah, one of them is called the breakdown, um, which is cool because we're on the break it down show, right? But this is this is called the breakdown, <laughs> and so the breakdown is a really fun thing that I do, um, where I get a, a, a yellow legal pad, and I will watch three films in the genre that I want to work in, and then I will um, watch that film, and I will pause that film probably every minute or every every couple of minutes, write down the time marker and write down what is going on. Mm. And in so doing that, you, you begin to learn the flow of that film and of that genre. And then I, I read three scripts in the same manner. By, by the time I'm done with that, I mean, I have a complete understanding of what beats are expected at what point for that genre. Could you take the notion, and you write about it in the book, but... Uh, just take a minute, because as an actor, um, when you say beats, could you just explain that? Because I read your book and I thought to myself, I just I'm just going to be I'm a little bit better actor now for having wow. this book. <laughs> wow. Because you, you discuss beats. Actors phrase, throw sir. around these words, but actors throw around new words like beats. I got to I got to. Where's the beat in this scene? Could you yeah. just describe that for a second? Well, the way that we term it for, for the book is is the different plot points that are included in the subplots and the main plot outline. You know, they're just beats that you want to hit. We have what we've created, what I've created, I should say, um, it, for this book is nine specific points for the main plot outline. And then we include um, three subplots that every script, screenplay should have and where those intersect with those nine beats in the main plot, which is honestly um, 
no one's ever really written about. No one's ever really covered subplots for screenwriting in a way that it, it, it's easily, easily understood and applied. And, and I've done that with this book. I, you make a point in, uh, in this chapter where you say you, it's not uncommon for you as a script doctor get a script that's 70 pages. And, and, and folks, I mean, that's probably someplace between 12 and 20 pages short yeah. of uh, where you need to mm-hmm. be. And you're, you, and I, I guess so. You're, and you sort of indicated the way I interpreted your book is by saying, um, as you begin to go through the script to read it, you you're already thinking that. L- l- let me make sure that in this script are subplots. Yeah. yeah. That are, uh, and, and so they they either they quite and I can ima- and I and I'm just looking at a script right now that my my friend if he's a first time screenwriter and we, we we're trying to you know move this thing and it, it's really mm-hmm. quite good you know for a guy coming out of the gate but oh, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a low it's a horror movie and it's written and here's I'm, I'm jumping around so I'm going to ask you two questions sure. so find finding the subplot so so uh, make a, a note of that for a second and then my follow up question I'll let you roll right into it is. Can you write or should you be writing based on the budget of the the place that you're hoping to sell it? Does that make sense? Yeah. No, that, that's a great question. Okay. Yeah. So the subplot uh, thing first. Sometimes they're subplot missing. Subplot first. Okay. Um, I've gotten scripts as short as 56 pages before. And these were, 56 and these were supposed pages. to be features. And they said, I don't, and they, and they uh-huh. say, hey, can you look at this? And they go, well, you know, you're about 30 pages short. And um, so then I go through it and go, okay, well, it's all main plot. There's no subplot. So then I, I bring in, you know, the heart plot, the supporting plot, and the antagonist plot. And before you know it, you know, we've chewed through 20, 30 pages easily. And can even go back and cut out some extraneous uh, main plot issues that are unnecessary and were only put in because mm. the writer, producer, or director was just trying to fill space. I see a lot of that. And the last thing you want is a meandering screenplay. Um, so uh, that's for that. Um, as far as budget, yeah, I do keep budget in mind when it comes to um, writing a screenplay, especially in the indie environment. I mean, if you're an indie writer and your you know, budget is always one of the, one of the main concerns. So um, uh, if I'm writing a spec, I was like, okay, let's write this for under a hundred thousand. So I'll start limiting locations, mm-hmm. limiting characters, limiting special effects. But if I come on to a gig where they're like, you know, we've got a pretty good budget. Oh, this is great. I get to take the handcuffs off and we get to even have even more fun. And I, and you just hit on something because as the, I'm looking at this script or, or hopeful about a hundred thousand dollar. I mean, you are sort of hitting a number there that, you know, please folks understand there's, for every film that you, I just saw the you know the the sequel the uh, Avengers sequel. Oh over man! The like like everybody's seen, right? Yeah. And it's probably the most expensive movie ever made. Or it's got to be close to it. Yeah. And the uh, but you know there's all kinds of folks. I've been all over the. I, I you know I've been in 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 forty feature films, uh, twenty studio Paramount, Warner Brothers. Fox. I've, made, I've worked with all major studios and and, been, and worked on these big budget uh, films, but I've also been all the way at the other end. So I, I and I, I I did it in reverse because I came out of the gate and I worked on some big budget films, and here I am later in my career, and I'm and I'm doing a, a little bit of everything now, including low budget films, which I'm I'm sort of passionate about uh, in a way too. Here's a horror film which the producer has a very special location available to him. Why not use it? Yeah. Why not write that into the script? Right. And that's what we've done. I, I, I think that to we don't want to throw out common sense in the, in the process of being – I don't think you need always to, to, to throw out common sense and still be very creative, right, at the same time? Yeah, I mean the, – the... The, the challenge of, of, of screenwriting is, is meeting the needs of the director, the producer, and, and budget, and really trying to force yourself to think out of the box and solve those solutions. And, I mean, personally, for me, I thrive in that environment. I ended up on a gig mm. um, where they had some severe uh, script problems, and they brought me in, and I said, when do you shoot? They said Friday, and it was a Wednesday. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
Whoa. whoa. And I said, okay. <laughs> so I ended up working. Um, I was writing, working on that script for, I want to say, 18 hours straight, two days in a row, uh, no breaks, just getting to it. And I love every second of that. I, I mean, as a, as a writer for me, put me in a corner and start giving me parameters and limitations because it, it forces my creative mind to really trigger mixed with critical thinking and I'll start writing and creating things that I never thought possible. And uh, the producers and directors are usually always impressed and excited about what we've created and, and having done that and going on onto that script, um, we gave them a product that they were very happy with. Uh, and, and so that's, I mean, to me, that's the exciting part about being a screenwriter is that kind of pressure to perform. One thing you talk about in the book also is, you know, sort of, and I'd like to, you know, flesh this out because I think it's, it's, it's so fascinating is there's a lot of different ways to make your move into a professional to, you know, make that transition from boy, you know, it's like it, you, how many actors every single day come from all over. Not only they come from Des Moines, you know, Iowa and every place else in between to become and to try to be, and there, there might be an actor. If you did a, a play in high school, you're an actor, but to be a professional actor is something yep. altogether different. Agreed. And they come to Hollywood to do that. Same thing goes for screenwriting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can sit there and, and God bless. I had one of my dearest friends some years ago. He would hammer. This has gone way back. This will, you know, age me a little bit. But going back to the 80s, and he had a, he was typing, right, with a typewriter, right. mechanical device. You, you young people Google it, right? <laughs> I mean, you need, like, finger muscles to do it, right? <laughs> and uh, he would hammer on this and he had, by the time, you know, he was 27, he probably had 14 scripts. Even. Okay. That's you know, good. He was probably writing a script every wow. eight months, give him credit. Yeah, you know, I mean, and that includes multiple rewrites. I mean, pretty polished scripts. And he hadn't sold anything. <sighs> and I think that in his case, I, I tell this to young, you know, sort of young actors and people in the business, they call it show business yep. for a reason it's not called they don't call it show hobby i mean you could, you could be it could be a hobby for you but I, in a perfect world i think they just call it business show yeah that's a good and point it, it's not very catchy but that's really what it is so you talk about how you can get your business side going and there's different ways to do it man and I know one of the ways that you are and, and, and succeed as a professional is, is not only you, you, write, you write books yeah. and then you, you give um, conferences and seminars. So um, and I can only imagine this. Can I just add this and then I'll, I'll let you kind of you know, take the ball. But I only I can imagine it's a beautiful way to expand your circle of influence. Yeah. The, uh, networking is key. Um, I have a whole chapter on it in the book and. You have to build alliances and kind of create that circle around you of support where it's mutual. It doesn't, you know, screenwriting does does not have to be a zero sum game. And I think that's part of an issue with some of the culture um, where some screenwriters think they have to beat the other screenwriter in order to succeed. You know, when you're trying to get gigs, I mean, I remember beating out 90 other screenwriters for a gig in London, a paying mm. gig. And it was cutthroat. And then I got the gig and it went from a paid TV pilot gig to an unpaid gig where they wanted me to write the entire series. And I was like, that's, that's, that's not happening. You know, so I walked. Um, and, and screenwriting doesn't have to be that way. You can, you can like you say, build your circle of influence, but I think it's more building your circle of support where uh, they know that you're there for them as well. And then you kind of succeed together where, where the rising tide raises all ships. Um, so I think networking is the big, big key to success. Um, and then I also, in the book, talk about the three T's of success, which is time, talent, and tenacity. Time, you know, it takes, you know, it's going to take a very long time. You know, it can take up to 10 years to really kind of, uh, get get in there and, and start getting your name known. Um, talent is essential. You have to be good at what you do. 
Um, and the tenacity is just not giving up. I mean, every screenwriter kind of hits that wall where they're like, this is it. I'm not going to get any further. I don't know if I can keep doing it. Um, and I've seen screenwriters crash and burn and I've gone through that kind of state of suffering myself. And one of the reasons why I wrote the book is to put a voice out there to say like, you are not alone. I am you. I have been through this. I have come through and have seen success. Um, you can do it. And, and I, I need people to know that because it's very easy to forget that, especially when you're, you know, in the thick of it. Talk about being in the thick of it and, and this stuff of, uh, you know, battling through the adversity that you create for yourself. And, and you're great at this, Jeff. You're great at talking through these things. And I, I know that your approach to writing is, is, I guess I would say compartmentalized or, or structured in such a way that if you're feeling overwhelmed by what you're working on, there's another part of the story you can go and look at. Just, I, I marvel at like your, your, uh, your illustrations in the book are fantastic. Going back to subplot, you know, there's an illustration that shows act one, act two, act three. And you basically, by the minute, say right around here, you need to go back to the heart subplot. And so you can mm -hmm. literally like, I'm stuck here. I'm not feeling creative. I'm not, but you can go back and look at the structure of your, of your play and, and start to work on, on what's there with that. It, it's, it's these things that, uh, it, it Hilliard, you know, and Hilliard's been on the show a million times. He talks yeah, about, he's great. yeah, he talks about having, uh, and this is just like, I guess for the emerging writers, uh, he's got several projects on his desk at any given time and he'll work for say 15 to 90 minutes on a given project and then put that down, go. And, and this is good for Pete. He'll go and he'll grab his weights and he'll go lift weights for like 15 minutes, put a bunch mm -hmm. of energy into his body. And then he goes and sits down and works on the next project. It, even And it can be an old script that he's freshening up and improving. Yeah. It can be the thing he's got due in two days. And then it'll be something in the future that he's trying to develop. Like he's always working past, present, future, always staying mm -hmm. fresh, always moving his body to create these things. Do you have tools like that in your life when you write? I think that's interesting you mentioned that. Um, that 15-minute work cycle is actually a genius thing that Edison began and Elon Musk um, templates himself after, from what I understand. The 15 minutes, stop, take a break, work on something else for 15 minutes mm -hmm. is is a thing that uh, is, is a way to work. Uh, for me, hmm, I will sit down and my, 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 my computer has become dangerous at this point. Because I will, I will sit down and say, okay, I'm going to work on this project, and then 12 to 16 hours disappear as I'm in front <laughs> right. of it. So um, it just – for me, I am very much like a rhino, and I just go forward. I power through it. I get it done, and time just disappears. You don't typically have that muscle built up. You know, like doing finger push-ups. Like you have to get strong fingers before you can <laughs> really do that, right? So, yeah. like, so for someone who is trying to sort this out, someone who's like, oh, is, sure, this is their third. Like, you know, taking care of kids, having a job. Oh, and then at the end of the night, I get twenty minutes. Yeah. I get an hour to work no, on screenplay. That's, yeah, that's a great idea. I can talk about that. So, building up that. I mean, I remember if I think all the way back to ten, fifteen years ago, I would sit down and set goals of I'm going to write for an hour. I'm going to write for two hours. And then eventually it quit being about time and it became about, I'm going to get eight pages done today. You know, and then it's going to be like, I'm going to write an act today. I'm going to go through the whole script today. And so you just, just kind of slowly set goals for yourself and have no emotional attachment to it. If your goal is to sit and write for an hour, even if you sit and write for an hour and you get half a page, you have achieved that goal and you should feel successful because you have done that. And then eventually that half a page, you know, over time will be like, you're just cranking out the pages and, um, you know, going into the ether and coming back when you're done type of thing. Right. I love this idea and this theme of um, strategy to be uh, optimize your production. Mm -hmm. Right. And, 
and everybody. This episode of the Break It Down Show is brought to you by Lions Rock Productions. That's us. We publish, evaluate, and develop podcasts just like this one, consult others to build their own, and create associated content and content marketing strategies. So if you're launching or expanding your social media presence, your business, or your personal brand, or if you just want to take your media presence to the next level, reach out to us on Twitter at Pete A. Turner or at John LG 69 at the Break It Down Show. There's a thousand ways to get a hold of us. Now enjoy the show. Uh, optimize your production, mm-hmm. right? And and everybody, you, you know, writing writers they by na- by the nature of the of what they've chosen to do, they act in isolation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you 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 do touch on the fact that you could have a a, a, a partner, a, a writing partner. And uh, I guess there's different. I, I've never, you know, you you could address best ways to work with a partner. I don't know if you, you're in the same room at the same time, or it could be remotely yeah. done. But with that aside, that's probably less than my guess is that's probably less than ten percent of how screenplays get done. Uh, probably mostly it's you sitting in in, in how we're, and and by the way, however it is, I, I'm we don't, we can't assume that that you type everything on your computer. I only know this because I follow, uh, not because of uh, anything I know from Frank Stallone, but Sly Stallone has, he's, he's been writing yeah. all these years, right? He, he, we famously understand uh, anybody that we, that are in this business. If you don't know that, I don't care if you're even only 18 years old, you should know that Sylvester Stallone created his own destiny because not only was he a heck of an actor as Rocky Balboa in Rocky in 1977, he, he wrote it. He wrote it and he's never, ever stopped. Pull up his credits. He's right. He's you, if you ever enjoy uh, the movie Expendables mm-hmm. one, two yeah. or three, he wrote them, you know, all, and, and most everything, at least half of everything he did in between. And he said it many, many times that the reason, so here's the reason if you're an actor to write, he said, um, if he had just quit writing after Rocky uh, and just thought, you know what, I've heard him say things, you know, paraphrasing here, I'm, I'm a movie star now, I don't need to write anymore. If he had ever done that, he wouldn't even have had a half the career that he's developed. He's, it's, it, the, the writing has continued to be the motor. We can, we can, we can, uh, subjectively discuss has he ever written anything as good again as rocky (laughs) maybe not but (laughs) but he's written some good stuff and he writes and where i'm going with all this you know he writes it on a legal pad yeah yeah and i think that's notable that does that is that a product of the fact that Mm -hmm. he's 72 didn't grow up with a laptop at all he did shoot i mean not even close, right? So that's his style. And so can you, you just yeah. want to talk to, to style? Well, um, yeah. well, we do have in the book the six keys to collaboration where we kind of go over how to properly collaborate with other writers. And because and, for me, I've, I've co-written with people that uh, we write over the computer together or they'll just dictate what they want and then I'm writing and putting in my stuff or we switch back and forth drafts. Um, style wise, you, you, you have to find what works for you. The legal pad for something, I don't know. There's something about a legal pad for writers that is, it's just magic. You know, it's, it's our, uh, it's our tome that we jot all of our best huh. ideas. And I actually have, I'm looking at my desk right now. I've got two legal pads on my left, one on the right. I have one in my car. I have one next to my bed because I wake up in the middle of the night with inspiration and jot stuff down with the lights off, trying not to wake my wife up. I have them scattered everywhere. I have one in my bag, so when I'm out and about, I write. So there's just something about that yellow legal pad, and I can't tell you what it is. As far as writing it out, on your own, I mean that's fine. Just as long as if you're going to show it to anybody, you you put it in a proper format. You know, <laughs> you don't want to send them, you don't want to send them raw notes. When I mean, and that goes to anything when you're writing. Before you send your work to anybody, um, you want that work to be as perfect as polished as possible. A lot of writers will make a mistake and get excited about completing their screenplay, and they will send out that first draft to someone. 
and then they'll get torn apart because mm. first drafts are terrible <laughs> and should never be seen by anyone mm. besides you and God. So I always tell people, put in a dozen drafts of rewrites and cleans and polishes and maybe have a professional go through it first so that we make sure it's perfect and then send it out to somebody to get to get notes or feedback. Um, so just that way, your name stays stays in good good stand, standing. You put all the time in. You go through the you go through the book because all the instructions are in there, and and, and you're feeling confident. And then you hear first drafts always suck. You think so, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and then so then you go through twelve yeah. revisions, and so you want to send it to somebody. But let's say you don't have somebody. Like you, I mean, Jeff obviously does this kind of thing. But yeah. can someone send you a script on the strength? And you're like, yeah, kid, I'll help you out. Um, I mean, yeah. So through we fix your script. That's that's what we do. I mean, we we take scripts from people every day and and give give coverage or or notes on them and tell them. Uh, where it, where its weaknesses are, where their strengths are. And then we even do a one-on-one -on -one consultation where we talk with them over Skype and kind of mentor them on a different approach to to their screenwriting. Uh, the other thing you can do is, and when, when it comes to that, though, we, we recommend that you send your script to three people at least to get those notes. Because one person, it could be, uh, you know, they may not have the best impression, or like I've gotten notes before from people when I was first starting, it, it gets personal for some reason and, and your notes aren't true. But if you get notes from three different sources, uh, what we what we recommend is you look at those notes and try and find similarities. If you start to see a similar note from those three different sources, then that's a that's an issue with your script and it needs to be fixed. As far as just I'm just getting into sure. the, the weeds, just the short question but the the technique so technically and you addressed it remember that even if you hadn't sold a script yet and cashed the check you still need to act as Absolutely. if you are a professional and when anytime you send anything out it needs to be not only uh as you point out make sure you double check your spelling double check your 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 all the, all the details your grammar you, you discuss it in a book and then what's the and then format? So uh, we have right. different software choices. I, I guess you could just kind of wing it on Word or Pages. Probably not the best way. To, what's the best way to, to go for somebody? Yeah, there's several at that entry um, level. So kind of Final Draft is very popular in the industry that will uh, format your your screenplay for you. It's also the most expensive. Writer Duet is a good one, especially if you're going to collaborate with other writers because you can make changes live as you both are writing, which is pretty cool. I know Wright Brothers has software, Movie Magic. Um, Celtics is another software. It's, it's popular with uh, beginner writers, but it's, it's it, it, mostly because of the cost. It's on a lower end. But the issue comes with the raw format that it exports. It doesn't export in the industry standard of an FDX. It, it exports as a TXT. So if you start sending that script out for people to kind of make changes to it, pretend, you know, like a potential producer or director, they can't. And, uh, and so you have to be very careful with that. Do your research, mm -hmm. right? It's a personal decision. Go ahead and do your homework on that. Find what, and I'm sure they all feel a little bit different. I don't know if they offer you like yeah. a free trial, but they should probably yeah, feel a yeah. little different. Okay. And, and do that. And then, and you, again, uh, the, your, the, the book, your book is so much information, but if <laughs> some of the, some of these topics are so critical I know you could have written, uh, you know, 20 more pages on a topic, no. but that's not what this yeah. book is about. This is a handbook, right? So one of the things that you discuss, you discuss, this is the, um, this is where in the rubber meets the road because uh, somebody who's gotten to the point where gonna, they're going to buy a book, they probably have a, a desire and a goal to sell something. And you talk yep. about agent versus manager, and that is one of the most fusing things in the history of Hollywood for not for for writers, for actors, for yeah. sometimes directors have writers, all kinds of people involved. And so uh, I just want to alert people to the fact that you, 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 you touch on these topics. The other one. And boy, this is one that confuses me because I'm I've got sort of one foot in and I'm trying to, to get both feet in on 
producing this uh-huh. low budget horror film with a aspiring again it's a this aspiring filmmaker he, okay. he's in the world of making short films trying to move up to feature length films and by the way this is a very common strategy too you might want to touch on and but and so by the way right so he was directing 10 minute movies made from guess what scripts that were what right. about 10 pages and then i and then I, and he's he's not, he's uh, partnered with a, a first time feature length screenplay writer i'm looking at this horror film script which comes yeah. in right at 80 pages okay and it, yeah I, i'm sorry and the question is when is the right when we're seeking to get this read by people that can have an influence which is the business side which is people right. with money and investors and things when's the is there not a, all the time, of course, the people want to read 80 pages. Sometimes you're going to hand them right. a synopsis or a treatment or one page. Could you just discuss well, that? Yeah, so synopsis and treatments can be uh, kind of up to interpretation. I mean, and that was one of the things I wanted to, to tackle with this. So a synopsis, you can do a short synopsis, which is about a half a page. Uh, the standard is called a one sheet which for the synopsis and that's a one page and i provide a template in the book of what what how you can write a synopsis Mm -hmm. um and so it's easily accessible because i know a lot of screenwriters struggle with that treatments are a different beast uh treatments you know used to be 10 pages now they kind of come in around six is pretty common i've I've even seen treatments coming in it um treatments are sometimes called script mints where they're like a hybrid of the two really i just kind of look at a treatment as a a longer more sussed out version of a synopsis and and in the book we provide um, some links for you to find treatments you can compare to but really what i recommend is you know when you meet a producer you network with a producer and, and if they if they get to the point where they want a treatment i just recommend you ask them what their expectations are uh, you know, what kind of treatment are they looking for? Mm. So just that way you make sure you're going to show them something that their eyes want to see. Because if you send somebody a 40 page treatment, but they are only looking for something six pages, then you might be in a, you might be in a. Cover this just really quickly. So one of the reasons why I love having you on is because you break this stuff down so simply. And I've said that over and over again, but really seriously, you guys should get the book. <laughs> Anyone in your life who is into screenwriting or, trying to learn how to tell stories that this book is, is fantastic. And Jeff is not just a friend, but I just believe in what he's doing. Thank you. The other thing I wanted to ask you, Jeff is so many tools in the book, like writing a log line, right? Yeah. It's the shortest, simplest thing ever, but it is over. It's like a word problem in math. Until the math teacher <laughs> explains it, you know, it's so true. <laughs> I mean, it just seems it's like, like it's problem. 10 words. Yeah. You're like, yeah, but it's a hard 10 words. It so is. You sit there and look at it. Will you talk a little bit about log lines? Just because it is an early step and it is crucial, oftentimes an impossible one. Yeah, I mean, because you, you write a 90 page script or an 80 page script, and then some, someone says, Hey, great job, break that into two sentences. And you're like, What? <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it feels like like an impossible thing to do. And so when, when, when creating this book, I mean, I was like, a priority was like, let's really break this mystery down so people can can have a template to create a log line. And so I just started really looking at log lines and breaking them down in my mind and figuring out, okay, really, what is this? And I had created a template for creating a concept. And if you really look at any log line, it is basically the concept. So I took my concept template and then tweaked it for the log line, and it works beautifully. So much so that the simplicity mm. of it is 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 beyond my mind because I just couldn't believe how well it really works. And then I picked for this book, the example I picked is the log line from Taxi Driver because to me that is one of the best log lines I've ever read. And and it's just it's just perfect. And then I apply the template to the log line and you can really see how to break it down for your own screenplay. That's so great. The uh, the, the the log line is two sentences that you, uh, a writer will construct that can I don't want to say it can make or break a pitch, but you know the proverbial right. elevator pitch, right? Which is you've got enough time in front of a producer uh, in a, in, a, in a hypothetical situation 
uh, or an agent that uh, just a few minutes to to make an impact and you, and you really and, and you really want to tr- uh, communicate that so the line the effort that goes into a log line the effort uh, that goes in, in, into the synopsis or treatment which you beautifully lay out on um, the synopsis that's very very helpful for people that that are, are looking at the book and also one thing you touch on is a query this right. is a way to pitch your script to people via an email and the language this is the vernacular of a professional screenplay writer and it's i i could have used i i knew a lot of what's you wrote about right. in this book having been in the business as an actor and reading scripts but I didn't know all this detail and I'm uh, the wiser man for it. So thank you. So that I, I understand now the difference between a synopsis and a treatment and a, and a query. And you can have a more professional, certainly conversation with anybody in the industry, having known these things. Well, so uh, much yeah, more I really appreciate it. I'm very honored, honored by that. The query is, is something that I don't feel screenwriters should be putting as much faith into and i i talk at length about that if you if you take the amount of time you spend on queries and put that into building your network you would be surprised at how fast you can get your foot into the door in one way or another um and we express out the queries because because i myself have done thousands of queries sent them out i've used services you know i've I've queried everyone and, and eventually even landed uh, a successful moment with it. And after seeing that and realizing it, I started to see, okay, this isn't the approach that, that we need to be focusing on. And, and so I, I happily try and um, break that myth for everyone that thinks that this is the only way to, to get into the industry. And I, and I think, at least I hope, it will open eyes for people. Can I go back? And forgive me. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go back to something. We. Uh, I, I, I. One last thing I want to touch on. When we're talking about the best way to take the ideas that are in your your brain and, and get them into a, a readable version, whether that's on a computer, choosing the software that you're going to use, writing it longhand, legal pads, uh, having access to legal pads, all these different ways that you've that you've d- described to our audience. Uh, the Here's another one that I just wanted to touch on. And, I, and I'll tell you where I gleaned this from. I am a fan of okay. uh, podcasts <laughs> like we're participating in right now as both, uh, you know, on one, both sides of the microphone. And I lo- one of my favorite, this comes as no surprise because he's quite, quite the, I think he'll be viewed as sort of the, one of the original, you know, sort of founding fathers of, 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 okay. of yeah. podcasts. And that's Joe Rogan. And he, and he, and I listened to his interview uh, recently okay. with Kevin Hart, yeah, comedian, actor. What an interesting man he is. And he writes, he writes books. And on top of his stand-up comedy, on top of his, his arguably probably one of the top five movie stars in the world at this point, he's got all these things going on in his life. He writes a book every two years. So he doesn't rush himself. And I, but I think this is applicable. His methodology, I think might be applicable, but your opinion, he does it with a voice recording app. He talks into it and then eventually, and you can have that translated and you never have to type or write anything down. And then he, then he hits print and he's got that. Then he has somebody help him, he doesn't write his book in a linear way. He says, don't get caught up in writing linear. I can piece this together later. Somebody helps me do that. But when I write my books on my life, on being successful, et cetera, this is the way it does. I do it by talking into my smartphone. Any thoughts on that? I take, I take notes on my, on, my, um, on my phone if, I'm, if I don't have a legal pad nearby. So um, I don't I don't see any issue with that, you know, as long as you eventually translate it over and, and you kind of get it going and, and writing in a nonlinear style is totally fine as well. Yeah. Touch uh, on that. Touch on yeah. that. And, uh, well, can, I, can I just say here's I, a writer friend of mine There's many ways to go about this. A writer friend of mine uses um, uh, what are they, four by six cards. Oh, yeah, that's very popular. 
Yeah, could you touch on that? And, and that's yeah. a non-linear approach. Is one of them? Yeah, the people will, and you can do that with our system as well. With 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 uh, with my my nine point main plot outline, you can do the the, the text index card as well. Um, some people do that and they'll shuffle them about and they'll just start writing down ideas and scenes and things like that. And, and that's totally fine. Um, for me, I, I, I mind map or I uh, take the legal pad and um, kind of jot it out and, and ideas all over the place. And then I, and then I will organize it. it. For me, it's fine as long as you're just being creative and starting the process. And as long as you figure out whichever way it is that your brain works I say go for it. I, I get, one of the reasons behind the book was to show to, – to honor all of the screenwriting masters who came before and the systems that they had, which, which is why I, I didn't bother trying to create my own system. I don't believe in like reinventing the wheel. I just wanted to pull together an amalgamation of the greats from a, a script doctor's point of view and provide an easily accessible way of creating a screenplay. And if you take the system I've created out of a linear fashion and come up with your own way of doing it, that's fantastic. Just write. That's what I care about. Mm -hmm. Let me just put a button on this topic. When you're writing dialogue, do you ever, do you ever, not, a couple things. Sure. Do you say it out loud? Do you ever write something, you wrote it, well, that sounds pretty good. This character is going to say that, yeah. and then say something back. Do you write it out loud, or do you ever grab your, your wife or a friend and say, Hold, let's just trade this scene oh. for a second? No, that's great. I love that question. Um, well, dialogue, I feel, is usually, I mean, terrible until you get to, like, fifth or sixth draft. And then I think mm. you really start finding the voice of your character. But what I'll do is I'll be writing and I'll pull my kid off the couch. And I'll say, come here, kiddo. And then he'll he'll walk over and my son Jonah will. I'll give him a character. Say, okay, you read this 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 one. I'll read this one. And then we'll bounce the scene off of each other. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I'll get that voice. Um, but another thing you can do, which I've done before, is get some actors from a local college and have a, a, a table read. Uh, mm. of your script you know pay get everybody dinner have them over and then have mm. them read your script and then get the individual notes from those actors or writers mm. break down that script and it's really interesting you'll know someone is really into their character when you start seeing them flip forward on the script as you're doing the table read because they want to know what happens next and then you know you've got them in the story as well we did a table read where a guy got lost on his lines because he was so <laughs> in, in, yeah, so enthralled with great. the story <laughs> 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 yeah so i mean that's another great great tool to do as well gems yeah All seriously gems. And the book is full of gems uh, you know we'll wrap this and and you know you're going to be back because i can't get enough of you jeff but <laughs> I, I, I love wanted, being here because it's graduation season and all too often, I've talked to people that said, I always wanted to try writing of some kind or another. So if you're a parent out there and you're trying to do something and you're trying to help your kids sit forward it out, the book is less than $10. Buy the book and throw an obstacle in front of your kid and say, get through this book and then let's talk every weekend about your script. Don't tell them they can't write. Give them this book as a gift and say, here you go. Let's see what happens. And if they got to go get a business degree, then God bless. They go get a business degree. But don't put the barrier of you can't do it in front of them because this book, you can do it. And I'm, I'm begging you guys, if there's any kind of writing passion in your life, this is – Jeff's not paying me to say this. This is 100% Pete endorsement. <laughs> it's fabulous. It's one of the best how-to books I've ever read. It's doable. And the screenwriting process, it's, it's impossible when you look at it from step one, but not with this book. It's really fantastic. Jeff, you've written really an incredible, incredible guide on how to do something so complex and it's absolutely it's absolutely doable. So I'll I'll let Pete say what he wants to say to close out and ask any other questions. But I just want to thank you, man, for doing this from all of us out here because you've made all right. you've made this dream job that much more accessible. It's still hard. It's still going to take ten years. You're still going to fail more than you're going to win. But with that book in your hand, you can absolutely get better starting from the first page. Thank you. I concur and want it for speak for myself for a person like myself that 
finds my sometimes the things that I'm trying to accomplish in my life, they it seem to go in fits and starts. This book resonated for me because I have figured out a, a, a couple of the ways to help me in my life too. If you've got ADD like me to help me get things done throughout the day and mm-hmm. the week and the month and the years is bullet points. Uh, I find that a very helpful way for me to organize the thoughts in my mind and, and get things done. For I'm looking at page 30 of your book, character sheet. Designing a character can be overwhelming. <laughs> yes, many writers get stuck at this stage. Creating something truly special and unique from nothing should be a fun process. And then you, bam, there's bullet points, 1 through 15. What's that character's name? And then you talk about the meaning of a character's name and how uh, instrumental that is going to be throughout the entire project. Number two or number three, number four, what is the age? What's the ethnicity? What is their style of dress? And I love this one. What's in the refrigerator? <laughs> right? And yeah, doesn't that, that informs all of us and we can all relate to it. Jeff, I'm going to come over to your house this afternoon and see what's in your fridge. How's that? You know, and I'm a trainer. So, you know, right? Oh, don't look like, in what? it. <laughs> a lot of pizza boxes. But that, in, that informs and you you've made this so uh this is this page right here the character sheet is informational for me as an actor oh all right so uh, above all else i'm like have i ever thought to myself you know some of these things which child in in the order what's my general outlook on i've thought of these things as an actor when i'm preparing I, there's a drill that i do that i called uh, i am okay and it's just you know i, I i'm a truck driver i am a guy, I'm, I'm a widow. I lost my wife to cancer. I am a guy that's overcome uh, uh, alcoholism. I am. And this, these are decisions. This is my imagination. Mm-hmm. But these are decisions, or maybe they're partly from the script and partly my right. imagination, that I've made choices for for my character. These inform me. And, uh, and owning them and committing to them will help inform, hopefully, the audience and via my performance. You are saying this is your list of character designs, which will ultimately, if you just take the moment to fill in these, these, you know, it's almost like a workbook that will inform the audience. And you've done, and that's just one small example of the of the, of the features of your book that I think would inform anybody, will, will certainly inform anybody looking to improve their ability to write a screenplay and it was my pleasure to meet you and pick your brain and uh, I'm a better man wow. for it. Thanks, Well, Jeff. thank you very much. I mean, it's, it's an honor to meet you, of course, and uh, your body of work is so impressive and I'm just, I'm very touched that you enjoyed the book. Thank you very much. Jeff Calhoun, everybody. Jeff Calhoun, everybody.